Alleluia, Christ is risen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What what therefore you worship as, as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allied and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of our own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, We ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judge in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. All this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. God holds our souls in life. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. God holds our souls in I will enter your house. 
house with burnt offerings, and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. God holds our souls in mind. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. God holds our souls in mind. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. God holds us. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at, and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For those of you who are baptized, I invite you this morning to think of your own baptism. Was it an event you remember? Or is it lost in the fog of early childhood? Were you immersed in a river? Or were you just sprinkled with a few drops of water? Was it a moment of great awakening? Or something like a tiny mustard seed planted in the vast field of your life? I've been to a number of baptisms in my life, and I've performed a fair number as well. And indeed, most baptisms are small, still events. They usually are not moments of whirlwind and tempest. Rather, at the heart of every baptism is a stillness, a smallness. When Jesus was baptized, we might remember that the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove and a voice declared, this is my son, the beloved, with him I am well pleased. But even at the heart of that great event was a stillness and a simplicity. There were some theatrics in the moment, of course, But after the moment, the world marched on as if nothing had happened. Baptism, small, quiet, seemingly insignificant. This morning, we are going to baptize little Susie Diaz. It will be a still moment, a quiet moment. There might be some tears, who knows? But even if there's that, that silence and stillness will be there. And I will pour some water over her head and I will proclaim that I baptize her in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, invoking the name of the source of all that is. 
I will take some oil and I will make a sign of the cross on her forehead and declare that she is sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. These are wild, big claims for such a small, small act. Because there are these big claims for this small act, there's an audacity in this seemingly insignificant event. For indeed, there's sort of a a big bang in those living waters. There is in those waters a hidden spring that possesses a limitless amount of potential energy. When the New Testament reflects on baptism, it makes some radical claims. So for instance, Paul, in the letter to the Romans, describes baptism as dying. Dying with Christ, so that we might be raised in him. For Paul, to be baptized is to die. Die to self. Die to the old life. Die to the old order. And then, to be born anew, born again into the new order, the new life. After baptism, our identity is now to be found in Christ. And thus, in the second letter to the Corinthians, Paul says that if anyone is in Christ, then behold, there is a new creation. A new creation present in that little font. And here today, we heard in the first letter of Peter, we see this comparison that Peter makes between baptism and the cataclysmic flood from the times of Noah. Peter writes, God waited patiently in the days of Noah when the building, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you. There in that little font, a global flood. For Peter, as the flood water separated Noah and his family from the old perishing world, so baptism separates the baptized from their old lives. They are invited into the new. And this new life that baptism ushers in is salvation, which is to say this new life is a life lived in communion with God. And this communion is made possible through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in this way, baptism is not magic, but rather our participation in the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. In this small, seemingly trivial event that is baptism, the power of the creator of the universe is at play. What seems like a piddly, a piddling event is in fact a doorway to a life lived in communion with love. But baptism is not just a doorway, it is also a window and a revelation into the nature of God's power. God uses the small things, the minor things of no importance in order to transform our lives at levels that we might not even be able to begin to perceive. God uses ancient stories of suffering and hope. God uses bread and wine offered at this table. God uses water and oil. These are God's hidden, seemingly trivial, seemingly paltry ways of working. We might long for a big display, but God gives us hidden simplicity and bids us to perceive this power through trust and through love. And I have to admit, 
that there are times where God's small way seems far too small. So case in point, Jesus tells the disciples this morning that they will receive the spirit of truth. But the reality is, is that the truth is having a rough time of it these days. We live in the age of the grift and the swindle. We are a culture absolutely enamored by deception and deceit. We are completely fascinated by the power of lies, especially if those lies appeal to our fears and our resentments. And the kicker, the kicker is that we know that we are being lied to. And yet, because these lies sell, we are forced to listen, caught in a negative feedback loop, circling the drain deeper and deeper. In the face of that, in the face of that reality, in the face of circling that drain, what power is there in God's small ways? What power are God's small ways in the face of such grand deception? Well, the power of God's small ways is grasped in faith. And though that power might seem small, inconsequential, irrelevant, it is the power that makes the world go round. In response to the brokenness of this world, we are called to both great and small acts of love, trusting that even in the small acts, God's power, grace, and justice are at work. In response to the great deceits, the ancient hatreds, the primal fears, we can remind ourselves that we are baptized. And to honor our baptisms means to live into the significance of this small, seemingly insignificant event. To live into the significance of a life lived in the new reality and the new life in Christ. And this new life, it looks like the baptismal covenant that we will reaffirm this morning. It looks like proclaiming by word and deed the good news of God in Christ. It looks like seeking and serving Christ in all persons and loving our neighbors as ourselves. It means working for justice and peace in the world and respecting the dignity of every human being. To live into our baptisms It looks like what Jesus has to say in the gospel lesson this morning. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, Jesus said. But of course, Jesus' commandment is simply this. Love one another as I have loved you. It is through love that the Holy Spirit can be allowed to work through us. It is through love that we will be able to see Christ revealed in our hearts, revealed in the lives of our fellow human beings. It is through love that we will see Christ present in the world. It is through love that we will come to know what Jesus means when he says, I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Never underestimate the power of the small act done in love. Do not underestimate the power of bread and wine offered at this table. Do not underestimate that power to transform the world. Do not underestimate the power of those waters. Look. Behold, when little Susie is baptized, see death being defeated. See new life emerging. See 
the cosmic drama that is in play in that little font. And know there that that small act that we perform this day has within it limitless power. And indeed, it is that power of love that transforms the world. Amen. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present to you, Francis 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 to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow, follow him and obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? We will. Let us join with the one who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Ooh, bring them up now. Please stand as you're able. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father of the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself. I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for Susan, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death, Lord, hear our prayer. 
Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Oh, no, it's okay. Yes, a quiet, still moment, right, exactly. <laughs> That's okay. So, Susie, I'm going to just do this real quick, okay. Susan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Susan, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized, and let's clap first. Mm -hmm. And let us say together, we receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Yay. Peace be with you. Thank you. Of course. What's that? Sorry, put it over oh, it's fine. It's yeah, it's perfect. Good morning, all. Because we did not have uh, our, uh, our traditional uh, prayers of the people this morning, I want um, to say, first of all, Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Uh, and I'd like to offer a blessing for all mothers as well. Let us pray. Mother and God, we pray for all mothers and for all those who provide motherly care. May they be blessed and filled with love, wisdom, and endurance. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right. Uh, it's a joy to see you all, and I want to welcome anybody who is uh, worshiping with us for the first time. Uh, if you are just such a person, would you raise your hand? We're going to clap for you, so it's not a horrible deal. Anybody want to get clapped for? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> welcome. It is a joy to have you here. Please do feel free to join us after the service. We're going to be out on the patio enjoying some refreshments and a uh, chance for some fellowship. And if you have any questions about this parish, there's a card in the pew, and you can fill out the card, and we'll be in touch, and uh, you get to know more about us, we get to know more about you, um, but welcome all those who are worshiping with us for the first time. Uh, just a few announcements. The first is that uh, we are wrapping up our, uh, our Sunday uh, class on, um, on, on the resurrection, the power, and the hope uh, next Sunday in between the services. Um, next week, we're going to look at the resurrection in, uh, in light of our own, sort of what becomes of us after we die and look at eternal life and all of that. Uh, so bring your questions, come and join us next week. Uh, we get started about 9.20 and we're done about 10.10 on Sunday morning. Uh, this Tuesday, uh, May 16th, from 6.30 to 9, uh, the women are gathering uh, for a, uh, a, a chance to, watch, uh, to break some bread together and to watch a short film called The Stranger at the Gate, uh, which is an Oscar-nominated short film about love conquering hate and uh, discuss how you can all love your neighbors. So um, uh, please do feel free to join the women for that. Should be a great conversation, good film, chance for some uh, fellowship and some uh, food together. Because we're having food, we would invite you to RSVP uh, by tomorrow so uh, that we know how much food to prepare or have prepared. Uh, and you can reach out to Carrie for that. Um, and then uh, this Saturday, May 20th, we're going to be celebrating the life of Jim Stewart, um, our beloved parishioner who has died but um, is with us still in spirit, and um, we will be celebrating his life here at 11 a.m. 
Uh, and uh, please do feel free to join us for that. Um, and in the meantime, I bid you to keep Jim and his family uh, in your prayers. Uh, and keep them in their, your prayers afterwards, too. Uh, and then... Um, I just want to put on your radar screen also that on May 28th uh, is we are celebrating Pentecost, and uh, as is our ancient and venerable tradition on Pentecost, uh, we will be celebrating with a grill, uh, with some barbecue, and uh, some uh, delicious foods and lunch after this 1030 service. So come and join us for that ancient and venerable tradition the way the early church intended. Um, those, those flames that came down on Pentecost lit up the grill too, so, um, <laughs> so come get a burger or a veggie burger or a hot dog or something uh, and celebrate in the power of the Spirit. So uh, that's the 28th of May uh, after this service. Okay, I think that's all of our announcements. And I did birthdays and anniversary blessings last week, so I don't need to do it today, though I will admit at the 8 o'clock service, I forgot last week and so I did it today. So. Um, <laughs> I didn't have anybody keep me honest at that service, so what are you going to do? All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are welcome at Christ's table. And will those who are worshiping with us online please join me in praying. In union, bless Jesus with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. Since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.